microfinancing. Hardly sounds like a good topic for an art show, but I swear it really is. Bread KC is an organization formed a few years back to help artists make up for a drop in dollars from the government. They put together these pop-up events all over town, sometimes using local celebrity chefs, cooking dinners that both feed people and nourish creative ideas that sometimes need to find just a little more funding. And it's not always big bucks, but sometimes it's just enough to get good things cooking. Ashley Holcroft has been watching the Bread KC process. So, here's what happens. On an evening much like this sweltering one in June, approximately 90 people, most of them strangers, buy a $15 to $25 ticket that entitles them to dinner and a vote on which of three pitch projects will win a microgrant. It's a concept that started in Chicago, but quickly spread across the country and made its way to Kansas City via Sean Starowitz, Andy Erdich, and joined later by Aaron Olm Shipman. It's community building. And so what's happening is, if you're a presenter, for five to seven minutes, you get 100 people listening to your idea. Regardless of whether they fund it or not, that's not what really Bread KC is actually about. It's literally about community building. And they've already microfunded a slew of projects that have enriched Kansas City. Projects that range from craft, to documentaries, to installations, to community workshops, and the list goes on. Try to be responsive to the community, and that sense of like, where are the funding gaps happening? Is it performance art? Is it music? Is it curatorial practice? But what we found early on was that if you had three projects that were really different from each other at once, one would ultimately always win, and it was really obvious which one would win because it was the project that involved children. We try to curate our dinners with like-minded presenters. And like this, this dinner is really about audience engagement. And here to try their hand at engaging that small but decisive audience are this quarter's contenders for the coveted prize. First up, it's private birthday party, which pretty much has it all. A treasure hunt, a couple of time capsules, and one big race against the clock. Private Birthday Party is a project that consists of uh, about 200 photographic slides of the drag culture in Kansas City from 58 to 68. Our first challenger's project began with an unlikely discovery made by creative partners Michael Bowles and Robert Heishman. We both found them about two years apart. Robert found his in 2006 in a scrapyard in the West Bottoms, and then two years later, a friend bought a house on Troost. And I went in the first week and found a shoebox filled with slides, went through them, realized kind of what it was, and then uh, called Robert shortly after. And then we realized that both of our collections matched up to even the same parties. Their goal is to preserve these treasures and find out all they can about the seemingly blank page in Kansas City history, and all before it's too late. Due to everybody being, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, time is of the essence. We need to piece all this together now. We can't wait on it. Everyone we've been in touch with that's either in the photos, uh, used to work at the clubs back then, or just was around, all are into what we're doing. They'll call us random times during the day and they'll give us a couple names that they remember or some phone numbers. And if they take home the prize? We're gonna use the Bread KC money for making the best possible scans of what we have right now. And we also are gonna use the money for travel expenses. We might do a road trip and visit a couple performers out in California that used to be a part of everything. So it's really just to get all the information and to document who's out there still. Our second candidate splits her time between classroom and studio and believes that confidence can be found at a toasty 6,330 degrees Fahrenheit. Angelica has a passion for sculptural welding. She's taught it at the college level for over two decades. And as an artist, she manages to harmonize steel with delicate porcelain to create something sublime. I want my work to convey an otherworldly environment, a sense of calmness and comfort. The creatures, they're basically between this attraction and repulsion, 
It's the drama inherent of something so alien yet so familiar. They're very visceral and the texture of the porcelain is almost like skin-like and the light within them, which I light them with LEDs, almost become life for them. Now Angelica wants to take her passion and considerable skills to the next generation of artists. My project is a traveling sculptural welding workshop and basically it's a mobile sculpture facility that I plan to take to local schools or art centers that have small or non-existing art programs. With the kids that attend the workshop, I hope to build their confidence in a way that they could feel that whatever passion that they seek out, that they could do it. Although, you know, welding is a technical skill, so if they choose to, they could use it in their career. Our final challenger found her calling by listening to that little voice inside. And that little voice said, Bagels! 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 After I graduated, I didn't have a lot of money because I was paying back student loans and stuff like that. But I really wanted bagels, but they're obviously a lot more expensive than just a loaf of bread. So I decided to figure out how to make bagels, and once I learned how to do that, I thought to myself, well, I can make any bread, really. And after like many failed attempts at making bread, uh, friends started asking me to make them a loaf, and people who I didn't know wanted to buy it too. And then I got the opportunity to work in a commercial bakery, and I also taught a bagel making class. Now Rachel wants to share her passion and the how-tos of her ever-expanding repertoire. My project is an educational take on the business that I've been running for the past two years uh, through YouTube videos, small zines, and classes. And eventually that would lead up to a space that would be a bakery, a co-op kitchen, and a classroom where I could teach full-price classes that would subsidize low-income classes for people who could otherwise not afford it. I think that baking and like doing something that maybe you haven't done before and being able to succeed at it is really empowering and that's kind of what I'm doing to kind of bring people together around baking and around the kitchen table. Now these raconteurs have only five minutes to sell their venture to a discerning audience. Usually on the first day, students are intimidated by the flame, and by the end of that four-week course, that ends up being their favorite piece of equipment. We've contacted a guy that was 13 in 1964, and he remembers at five in the morning, a whole bunch of drag queens and party attendees getting arrested and fighting the police. One of the girls in my class asked me, is yeast a bug? And that made me realize that a lot of people don't know what is going into their food. There's this Midwestern politeness that's here, but they're also willing to be critical. And they, they have this like engagement and wonderment in one eye, and then they're also critical in the well, other. It's the show me state. It's the show me state, right? It sounds really trite and idealistic, but you really can make the things that you want to happen a reality. We've raised almost $18,000, and I just think that sooner or later people have to acknowledge that they are responsible for the community that they build for themselves. And that's what we did. 